Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and actually get started and whatnot with the, uh, with the exam or, or with the class. Let me get the sign-in sheet passed around. So um, a couple announcements, so I'll give that to you. So a couple announcements. Number one, exam one, you all have the grades. You all have it returned to you. And I've also um, posted everything to Blackboard so that uh, every, everything should be there and everything's um, calculating your, your average as it is right now. Um, I've also got homework four graded for you, and we did this a little different. Because um, uh, I was a little paranoid last time with the network drive, I decided I don't really want to, um, uh, I didn't really want to mess with it, but you all had a very legitimate you know, question. You're like, well, what did I get wrong on homework three? What deductions were made? So um, the TA was granted access to the network drive, and if you open your network drive, your site CS folder, um, you should see a little document and it says something like homework for comments and it'll tell you what you got wrong and, and what you were deducted or what was deducted. In addition, you go to Blackboard, you'll have the solution. So you can see here's the homework I submitted, here's what I got wrong, and then you can go to the solution and see, okay, now I know what I what I got. So sound fair? Okay. Um, in addition, I wanted to uh, make you all aware of something. Um, as you know, uh, this isn't the only section of engineering computations that's being taught this semester. So we, the three professors who are teaching computations, we're doing our best to try and coordinate the, uh, the sections. And we all got to talking, and we had scheduled two more Excel assignments. But to be honest, we didn't really think that was reasonable considering the topics that we have left in Excel. So what we decided to do was this. Instead of there being a homework five and a homework six on Excel, we're going to take these two assignments and kind of combine them um, to a single assignment, and we're not going to give that out until Thursday. And then it will be due Tuesday, March 14th. Um, now, on March 16th, we have a makeup day, which, assuming we don't have any blizzards between now and, and uh, spring break, we're going to cancel class. So the, the class before spring break, well, so, so, so we have Tuesday, March 14th, and Thursday, March 16th, okay? So you'll turn your homework in on Tuesday. We'll do a final Excel lecture on Thursday. We'll cancel class. So that'll give you a nice little break between uh, now and when we start MATLAB. that sound reasonable? Figure that's fair. Um, if you, uh, the long and short of it is we're going to, um, we're just going to combine those two assignments. Does that sound fair? Any questions? Okay, so on Thursday, we'll give you a, a, a homework five on, it's sort of your last Excel assignment, your last hoorah, and um, we'll, uh, we'll close it out with that. And then when you come back from spring break, it's MATLAB City. Sound good? All right, so today um, I do want to, we do need to continue discussing um, uh, concepts with Excel. Um, I don't know that today, really needs um, its own assignment, though, because we can take the stuff that we learned today and apply it to other assignments that we do down the line. So some of the stuff that we're going to talk about today is stuff that we kind of hit in previous, uh, uh, in previous lectures, and it's just sort of the formal discussion. So the first thing I want to talk about, uh, and really the main topic of today, are built-in functions. Now, We've already um, spent, we've already used some of these built-in functions already. Um, for instance, I think we've used the sum command or the sum function. If I have a bunch of stuff, use the sum command to add them up. Um, I assume everybody in here at least has a general concept or an idea on how to compute an average. You know, how do you compute an average of a bunch of numbers? Add them up, divide by the total count, right? So if you've got five values, the sum of those values divided by five is the average. Um, and we've also used things like trig functions, like sine function and cosine function. So um, we've used them, but we haven't really formally defined them. We haven't actually gone through and said, this is what a function is. This is how it works. So I figured, let, let's do that. Let's actually discuss what a function is. So a function is a process or a procedure that will give you an output based on some input. So um, you could think of a function as, you know, if, if my input is some eggs, some milk, some flour, what have you, this is my input. I put these ingredients 
into a process and out pops out a cake, you know. So if my input can be ingredients, my function would be cooking, and then the output is a cake, right? Does that sound reasonable? That, that, that's kind of the general idea behind a, a function. So I have some input, I do something to it, and I get some output. Now, uh, in Excel and, and, some, and sometimes in other avenues, instead of calling them uh, inputs, we can call them arguments or parameters. Uh, the function is, uh, it, it, it is uh, dependent on some arguments, and Excel tends to use that language as well, but that's just input, okay? Sound good? Okay. Now, uh, I want everybody to open Excel if you haven't already done so, and I want everybody to um, follow along with me here. I want you to open Excel, and I want you to click this button right here that's next to the uh, uh, formula bar, and it has like f of x, right there, f sub x. What that should do is open up a menu bar that looks something like this. So if you haven't already done so, go ahead and do that. Um, everybody got their Excel open? Is it freezing up on you? Gotta love these, these machines. They're awesome, aren't they? <laughs> I can see you all are having a hard time containing your excitement over the speed of these machines, right? There we go. I'm, I tell, I'm gonna get y'all laughing. It's gonna happen. All right. Um, while you all are doing that, I'll go ahead and open up Excel as well and kind of do the same thing. So I'll sit here and wait for another 20 minutes while mine loads up, right? Okay. Blank workbook, there's that, and the function bar. And you should get a button that pops up, up like this. Now, what this uh, dialog box is, is essentially a database, a, a lookup tool, if you will, for every single um, uh, function that Excel has available to it. Okay? Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I've been using Excel for 10 years now, and I have built some ridiculously massive spreadsheets before. I've got spreadsheets that'll do every single bridge engineering calc, you know, known on, on a given girder, and they get a, pretty massive. And so I've used Excel for, for quite a while, and I'll be perfectly honest with you, I guarantee you there's some functions I've never used before, okay? So I, you know, there's going to be stuff that you don't know how to use uh, or never used before, and, and that's fine. The point behind this particular dialog box in this lookup tool is to learn how a particular command works. Uh, who didn't get the sign-in sheet? All right. All right. Um, so let, let's keep it simple. Okay, so let me, let me escape out of this. Uh, let's put in a number here. Let me, let, let's go back to our spreadsheet and let's just keep it simple. Let's put in the number two right here. Okay, just keep it simple. And let's come up with a mathematical relationship that we can use for, uh, for, for this. Let, let's say I want to take the natural logarithm of 2. Okay? Well, now I, I think uh, you know, one of the things about Excel is I think the formulas are pretty predictable. If I want to take the natural logarithm of 2, probably the function is going to be ln, right? That's what you've seen in pre-calc or calculus or what have you. Um, and that's, that's exactly the same function here. So a lot of the language is pretty understandable. You can guess, you know, what's the tangent function, T-A-N. You know, what's the natural logarithm, L-N. You, you, know, you can guess what that stuff is. But I want to put on the blinders and say I don't have a clue. All right, so let's go to the, the function bar and let's see what the function bar will do for us. So first thing, so I've got my cursor or my, my, I've got cell A2 active, so I've got this right here. So let's say I don't have a clue what the function is, but I know it's a natural logarithm. I can go into this search bar and literally type in, um, let's delete all this out, let's type in natural logarithm. So I type in natural logarithm, hit go, and of course it freezes up on me. There we go. Okay, and you notice that's the first one that pops up, the ln function. Everybody see that? So what you can do is you can hit OK 
and then it brings up a dialog box that specifically, bless you, that specifically um, delineates how this function works. So now we're in the ln, you know, function dialog box. So ln of a number, and it returns the natural logarithm of a number. So we need a number in here, and it tells us we need a positive real number. Now I could type in the number 2, or I could use this button, and that should be familiar from when we uh, did plotting. I can click this, and I can say, all right, pick cell A1, and drop down. So the formula is the natural logarithm of A1. Notice I didn't type any formulas at all. You know, I'm using Excel to build the formula for me. Okay? So natural logarithm of A1, it even tells me what the result's going to be. 0 0.693147, da 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 all right, I can hit OK, and there you go. So it has taken care of all of that for me. And I would, um, I would recommend that you take some time, you know, regardless of you know, the, your grade in this class or how you want to do it, Engineering 111, I would recommend you take some time and just explore some of the different functions that uh, Excel has like like for instance all right let me let me go to another blank cell so <coughs> you'll notice um, if you go into select a category there's a number of different just uh, inside each one of those categories there's dozens of different formulas that Excel can use like for instance if I go into the financial category um, for those of you that are in engineering econ you might you get to use some of this stuff like accrued interest and um, number of days from the settlement date or let's see uh, DB which is the depreciation of an asset um, we have um, dollar price into a fraction or you know internal rate of return I mean this is you know functions that uh, Excel will do for you I mean when you take engineering 221 engineering economics you learn about all of these uh, computations and then Hopefully you're learning that Excel will do them for you. Has anybody taken engineering econ before? All right, so you, you probably have heard some of this stuff in there, like you know, uh, uh, MACRS and, and, and get everything back to present value and all that. I mean, like, like look right here, PV, returns the present value of an investment based on the rate, the number of payments, the future value, et cetera. So it'll do a lot of that stuff for you. So it's just something to keep in the back of your head when you take 221. Um, there's a lot of statistical formulas, things like the average, the uh, looking at distributions like normal distribution and, and, uh, and uh, binomial distribution and uh, covariance and standard deviation and all that stuff is here. So it's definitely uh, uh, some pretty, uh, pretty useful stuff. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Let me go back to the, uh, the PowerPoint real quick. All right. So. Um, there's, there's a whole host of different um, formulas that are worth mentioning. Uh, I also have here, uh, well, this is me going into the natural logarithm one. I, I also have here a pretty reasonable list of some pretty common ones. And I'm not saying you need to memorize every single one of these. What I'm more interested in is that you have the ability to understand, you know, their usage. Like, for instance, there is no sign negative one, you know, like, uh, you know, an inverse sign, we call it an arc sign or a sign uh, of, of X. So, you know, A, A, C, O, S, A, S, I, N, A, T, A, N, these are the arc cosine, arc sine, arc tangent, so everybody is aware of that. <coughs> uh, Excel will also do hyperbolic cosine, hyperbolic sine, hyperbolic tangent, uh, and all that. So, if you, if you haven't heard of that yet, uh, you will, uh, probably in, like, Calc 2. Some, in, in one of those classes, you'll, you'll see that. Um, let's see, some of them like degrees, uh, we, we've, um, we've recognized that. This is one that might be pretty useful, EXP. That's um, uh, to do an exponential, so you all have heard of the natural base E, you know, 2.7. So if I take the function EXP of 2, that'll give me E squared. So if you do EXP of 1, that'll give you the natural base, the, uh, the E value. Um, so factorial, um, let's see, natural logarithm, integer components, uh, greatest common divisors. Um, it'll even do a little bit of matrix math for you, like uh, determinants and, and multiplication and inverses uh, and things like that. Um, although it's a 
a little tricky. You got to make sure you're, uh, you know what you're doing. Um, if you do the function pi, which I'm actually, I'm going I'm to show you this one. So if you do this, if you go uh, over here and you do the function pi, but you don't put any arguments in at all, you get pi. So you don't have to type in 3.14159, da, 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 da. I mean, just, you know, just do that, and, and it's already got pi built in there. So uh, I thought that was worth mentioning. Um, uh, there is a power function, and I noticed there are a few people on the exam using the power function to do, like, squares and cubes and, and whatnot. Personally, I think it's easier to literally just use the caret button, but you can use the power button uh, if, or, or power function if you'd like. Um, rounding, it'll do rounding. Square root, SQRT will do the square root uh, of a given number, or you can raise to the one-half power. That works as well. Um, uh, and some sum totals, some other sums for, for statistics uh, and, and what have you. Any questions? I'm not saying you need to memorize all these. I'm not saying that at all. But it is a good idea to understand them and understand how they, uh, how they work. All right? Sound good? Okay. Um, now, going back to this, uh, going back to this uh, uh, formula bar, uh, let me go back and, and pull this up. As I said, you've got formulas that are in different categories, you know, like financial, date and time. Uh, I'm going to go up to look up and reference. And um, I'm not, let, let me be clear, I am not going to describe how every single formula in Excel works. I'm not doing that. But I am going to pick a few formulas that I think are fairly useful and that I think require a little bit of explanation on how they work, and I'm going to show you those. Okay? I don't think you need explanation in here on how the cosine function works. You, you, had trig or precalculus or what have you. You know what, what it means to take the cosine of a number. But some of these, I think, are, are, are worth mentioning. Um, and specifically, some of these lookup and reference formulas. Um, so for instance, you've got H lookup and indirect and match and things like that. To, um, to kind of explain how these lookup functions work, I'm going to isolate a particular one. And I'm going to call it, uh, let me just close this. Uh, I'm going to isolate one called VLOOKUP. Now, VLOOKUP looks a little daunting. It looks kind of complicated, but it's really not uh, so bad. Um, so specifically, um, VLOOKUP is used to help, um, uh, uh, help you search through a large table of data. Like, that's, that's essentially what a lot of these reference functions are. Now there's, there's th really three arguments that you need. There's also a fourth one for range lookup, but I'll, but I'll talk about that here in a second. But there's three arguments that you need. You need a value that you're looking up, you need a table that you're getting your data from, and you want the, the column that's going to be returned. And I'm sure some of you are seeing this and going, whoa, there's a lot going on. promise you it, it's really not, uh, not so bad. Now. Um, let me sort of explain how this works. Um, so I put on Blackboard, I put a, uh, uh, a Excel spreadsheet that looks something about like this. Does everybody see that? Everybody got this? OK, I want everybody to open this. Um, so let me explain what I got here. Um, I have here a, a spreadsheet, and I've got a table. I have purposefully not formatted that table at all. Okay, it's actually not formatted on purpose um, because we're going to play around with format uh, later. But I think you all could probably guess what this is. This is a homework assignment that's detail or a, a, a table of homework assignments, and it's detailing um, whether or not you passed or failed uh, or et cetera. So far, so good. All right. So um, we're going to uh, do a couple things to this uh, this table to make our lives uh, a little easier. Um, right off the bat, though, um, let, let's play around with, with some of this lookup stuff. Okay, so if you notice, there's 20 different uh, homework assignments, and they each have different titles, different grades, uh, et cetera. Sound good? All right, what I'm going to do is I want to create a little tool 
over here and I want to use this tool to help report uh, some data from the table. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to pick a homework ID. So somebody, pick a number between 1 and 20. Anybody? 14. All right, so 14. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to type in this cell, homework 14. Okay? I want this to match what's in this table. All right? Sound good? Everybody with me so far? Okay. All right. Now, Now, what I want these four cells to report are data from this table. So, in other words, this says description. So, because I've indicated homework number 14, I want, was it, non-symmetrical bending? I want that to be what pops up, okay? So, let me show you how this works, all right? So, we're going to go into description, and we're going to go to equals V lookup. All right. Now, in order to do VLOOKUP, we need um, three quantities. Okay. Now, the first thing that it's asking for is the lookup value. Okay. So, in other words, it needs to know what it's searching for in the table. And my man here said 14, right? So, I want it to search for that. Okay, so I want it to search for whatever is in cell I3. Okay, now the next thing it's got to ask, it's going to ask for is, well, where are you looking this stuff up? Well, I propose I'm looking this stuff up in this table over here. So I'm going to highlight this entire table. So from there to there. So it should be. B3 to F22. Sound good? All right. Now, so what it's doing is it's saying, excuse me, what it's doing is it's saying, all right, um, I've got this table. I want to look up this value. And once I find this value, I need to report some output. Now, the output that it reports is based on whatever column you're interested in. Uh, interested in. And the way this works is when you're uh, looking this up in this fashion, you treat the table as its own little sheet. So this is column number one, column number two, column number three, column number four, column number five. So I'm going to put comma two. Sound good? Now when you press enter, it says non-symmetrical bending. Does everybody see that? Now, the nice thing about this is uh, somebody spit out another number. Something else. Anybody? 19. So if I take this homework ID and I change it to homework 19, it switches. Okay? So this might not seem like really valuable if all you've got are 20 different homework assignments, but um, I'm curious how many people have ever, here's a for instance, how many people have ever gone to a place like Advanced Auto Parts or Home Depot or, or, or work there? I mean, how, how big do you think their item database is? Huge. Thousands and thousands of given items, right? That's what this is doing. You know, you've got, if you've got an Excel sheet that has thousands and thousands and thousands of items and you need, bless you, and you need a particular item, just put in your item number and there you go. Okay. Now, one thing I'm going to do before I, I, I mess around with this a little bit is one, uh, there's a couple little tips and tricks that I like to use with, uh, with VLOOKUP. One of the tips and tricks that I think is pretty valuable and can uh, more often than not reduce errors is to lock all your references. So I'm going to highlight, oh, bless you. I'm going to highlight all these cell references and hit F4 to turn them into to dollar signs. All right. And then I can take this, this, uh, this particular cell and I can copy it down. So, so watch this. I'm going to take this, I'm going to copy it down one cell. Now notice nothing changed because I locked everything. But instead of uh, column two, I'm going to report 
column three, and now it's giving me the grade on that assignment. Sound good? Not too bad, right? In fact, while I'm at it, I'm just going to do it for the rest of them. So this will be column two, this will be column three, this will be column four, and this will be column five. So F4, yes. So make that one column four, make this one column five. Now, when you do that, if you've done this correctly, you should have zeros in the past column or the past row and the letter row. The reason why is because there's nothing there. We haven't done anything yet. We're going we're gonna to mess around with that a little bit and see what happens. Is everybody good on that? Okay. Now you can, rem all right, you can click that little right there. Remember that? Yeah. Remember, you can copy that down by grabbing your little, uh, your, your fill handle right here, that little solid square on the bottom right of the active cell. I'll let you all mess around with that for a little bit. Everybody got that? What's that? No, I pulled it down, but then I had to go in and change the formula. So watch this right here. So this one references column two. That one references column three and column four and column five. You see that? Yeah, you got you to go in and change that. And again, the nice thing about this entire, does everybody get the sign-in sheet? Sign-in? The nice thing about this is if I go up to that ID again and I say I want to know what's going on with homework 4, type in 04, and everything else changes. Yes, sir. Let me see something. Hmm. Oh. It's got a match. I thought that worked. Oops. Oh, you've got a negative. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Has everybody else got that? Any questions? Now, you all are in college, so answer me this. Let's let's look at homework number twelve. So let's look at homework number 12. Okay. You all are in college. What happened on homework 12? What's that? Bad stuff happened on homework 12. Did this particular student pass homework 12? No. Not, 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 ha what's that? Nothing <laughs> What, depending on the professor, is that what it is? I know things um, <laughs> about stuff, I'll tell you. Um, <laughs> um, but let, let's just have a discussion. Now, this student didn't, we're, I think we're all in a general agreement that this particular student did not do so hot on homework 12. Specifically, they failed homework 12. Now, why are you saying that? Why did the, home, the student fail homework 12? Okay, but okay. So you're saying, assuming that the homeworks have a value or a cap at 100 points, but and, and that's that is true. They they do. But my question is, why the like? Why are you saying that failed? Like, what's the threshold for passing or failing? Traditionally, six or 60 or 60 or something like that, right? I mean, what is it? Anything in the 90s is an A. Anything in the 80s is a B. Anything in the 70s is a C. Anything in the 60s is a D. Once you hit 59 and go down, that's it, right? You're in F territory, right? So I think it's pretty clear looking at homework number 12, they failed it, right? Now, what about homework number two? How'd they do on the homework number two? They did pretty good on homework number two, right? You'd say they passed homework two, all right? 
So if you notice, I've got this E column that's got pass. I could start typing in pass, fail, pass, fail, pass, fail. I'm lazy. I don't like to do all that typing. Instead, I would like Excel to tell, to tell me whether or not these are pass or failed. Now, there's a couple ways of doing that. And we actually already have the ability right now to have Excel doing this without any formulas. Remember conditional formatting? Remember, I could have Excel take all the values that are less than 60 and make them red or, or green or what have you. And I could just, those are the ones they failed, right? But I don't want to do that. I want to have some, something tangible, something I can uh, mess with a little bit. So herein lies the if command. So uh, we've, gone, we've gone through and done all this. Um, okay, I have a typo. That's supposed to be if. Sorry. Sorry, on slide 16, that's supposed to be if. Apologies for that. All right, let's take a look at the, uh, the if command. Okay, now if is a pretty straightforward formula uh, in Excel or function in Excel, but it's also an incredibly powerful one. Okay, if is Excel's way of helping you make a decision. So here, here's the, the syntax of the formula. Okay, if a certain test is true, it spits out a certain value. Otherwise, it spits out another value. That's it. Okay, so let, let's sort of play around with this, um, this on this sheet and see if we can get a, a, a test to work that will spit out what we want it to spit out. Let's start off working on this, this E column. Okay, now let's just have some discussion and keep this simple. Um, would you agree that the threshold for passing or failing is a 60? In other words, if I look at homework number four, homework number four, they got a 60. They just barely passed, right? But anything lower than a 60, they have failed, all right? So let's do a test, all right? Let's say equals if, and let's do this one cell at a time. Let's look over here, okay? Now let's come up with a test. Now a logical test is something like if this value equals this value, or if this value is greater than or equal to a given value, or less than a given value. It's all, I mean, it's inequalities or equalities. So let's come up with a given test. Let's look at our test and let's see if that value is, I don't know, less than 60. Would you agree that that is a reasonable test? If that, uh, we're looking at cell D3 and we're asking ourselves, is that cell less than 60? Now I gotta have two outputs, a value if that test is true and a value if that test is false, okay? Now let, let's be clear. If that cell is less than 60, does it mean that the student passed that assignment or they failed that assignment? They failed that assignment. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do if this cell is less than 60, comma, and I want it to report some text. Now to get Excel to report text, I have to put it in quotation marks. So I'm going to put fail. Okay. So if that test is less than 60, that student in fact failed that assignment. Otherwise, I need a, another output, and the other output is going to be pass. See that? So if I press enter, it tells me that student passed that assignment. Now do you all remember how to quickly fill a column? Remember you go to that and you double click the little black plus sign right there? Ma'am. And look at what it did. I think one of the good tests is homework number four. Homework number four, we agreed, that's on the line, but it's a pass. Did 
Everybody got that? Anybody got any questions? Yes, sir. You, you mean like right here? Yeah. Okay. When you click it, it'll give you like the table. Would that be more helpful? The table, I, I don't understand. Uh, All that. You can use the, that. No, that's a good question. You can use the dialog box if you would like, and that works too. Then no, 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 no. You can't just put D3. You have to, you have to tell it what is the comparison. It's got to be D3 less than 60. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Everybody else? Y'all good? Now we're gonna get fancy with the next one. So bear with me. Oh, the next one. Next one's gonna be a little complicated. All right. Pretty much. Let me ask you a question. If you had to assign a, a letter, all right, everybody, everybody pay attention to this. If you had to assign a letter to homework number one, what letter grade would you give that? A D. What about homework number two? A. And homework number three? An F. Everybody see what's going on here? Okay. So what I'm going to do, this, I'm not going to lie, this formula is going to get a little nuts. It's going to get a little long. But what we're going to do is what's called a nested if statement. So the idea is we're going to have if statements inside of if statements. It's not going to be so bad when you start building out. So everybody, you probably want to follow along with me to make sure this, this, uh, this works out. Now, I'm going to go to this letter column and let's start off with equals if and we're going to start building a formula together. Now, help me out. Let's start, we're going to, the whole time we're going to focus on this cell right here and we're going to uh, we're going to start to make this decision process now. Um, based on our assumed grading scale, what's an A? A hundred to ninety, or what you I think you probably said it a little better. You said anything ninety or above, right? So how about this? Would you would a fair test of whether or not this cell is contains an A? Would that be if this cell is greater than or equal to 90? Would that be a fair test? Anything greater than or equal to 90, that's an A. Sound good? Now, if that test is true, what should we report out? An A, right? So I'm going to put comma A, right? Now, if that is not the case, then all we know is it's either an A or it's not an A. Okay? So I propose that if it's not an A, well, that doesn't tell us whether or not it's a B or a C or a D or an F. We've still got to keep going through the, uh, the roll, right? So I propose if this test fails, we've got to make another test. So let's do if again. Okay, now I'm going to make a, another uh, assessment about D3. I'm going to ask myself, well, if D3 failed the A test, maybe we ought to make the B test. And the B test would be whether or not cell D3 is greater than or equal to what? 80. All right, so if it's greater than or equal to 80, then it's a B. See how this is going on? Yes, sir. That's a good question. So you're saying, like, like if, if we're here, then not only is it greater than or equal to 90, it's also greater than or equal to 80, right? That's a good question. The answer is, once Excel reaches a statement that is true, it stops. Yeah. Yeah, once it gets here, it's going to report A and then it's done. It's not going to continue to go through. That's a good question. Does that sound good? Everybody else all right with that? So you, I think you can probably see the pattern. Okay, if we're greater than or equal to an 80, we're a B. Otherwise, we keep going. So 
I'll go up here to sort of clarify it. So we have another if statement. If D3 is greater than or equal to a 70, then we're in C territory, right? Otherwise, and we keep going, right? Is everybody with me on this? Now, I propose that with the last one equals if uh, D3 is greater than or equal to a 60, this is when we can sort of stop because if we're greater than or equal to a 90, we're an A. If we're greater than or equal to an 80, we're a B. Greater than or equal to 70, we're a C. If we're greater than or equal to a 60, we are a D. But if we have failed all of those tests, well, we've done more than fail these logical tests. We failed the assignment, right? Because anything that is lower than a 60 is an F, right? So I propose right here, this is when we can say F, all right? And once we've got that, take your right parentheses and start closing it up. And we ha how many if statements do we have? One, two, three, four. So we need one, two, three, four right parentheses. Does everybody see that? If you've done this right, you should get a D in that homework one column. Is everybody with me on that? You want to know how I calculate grades for this class? This is how I do it. I let Excel do it for me. And if you take this, this formula and you copy and paste it downward, you get a whole bunch of letters. So, you know, you can look at homework number 9, that was an F, but homework number 11, that was an A. Pretty nifty, isn't it? Knowing, now that you know how this works, I mean, you could probably write a spreadsheet to calculate your grade in this class, you know? So, you ought to if you haven't already done so. We're, we used to call it the at-home game you know, when I was in college, you know? What do I need to get on the final to get this grade in the class, right? And now you know how to use goal seek so you can do what-if analysis, you know? Like, what do I need to get on this, you know, goal seek this to get an 80? I know things, you know. I told you I know things. <laughs> All right. This isn't so bad, is it? Pretty nifty stuff, right? Now, I've got something else I want to show you, okay? Um, I want you all to do something for me, all right? I want you to do this. I want you to highlight this entire table, like the entire table. I want you to copy it. And I want you to paste it down below. There's a reason why I want you to do that. I want you to mess around with this down here. All right, so I, I just made a copy of it down below. Notice how all, we didn't lock any of the formulas. Everything's referencing this, this range down here, okay? Everybody with me? Okay. One thing that we haven't really messed around with, and, and I wanted to show you all because I think it's, it's quite valuable, is I wanted to show you I got two things I want to show you. I want to show you tables and I want to show you data validation. It's not in the notes, but it's, it's pretty simple. Um, so I want to highlight this, ta this new table, the duplicate, the table down here, and s see where I had conditional formatting? Right next to it, you should see format as table. So click that down and you should, there's a whole bunch of pre-built formats. I mean, just pick one that you like. It didn't really matter. Uh, I like this one. I'm going to pick this one. Okay? Now, where is the data for your table? It says this range, which is all right. You're going to want to check that your table has headers because our table does have headers. That first row is not data. It's like, you know, the description, the grade, the pass, fail, all that. And hit OK. Then it makes your table look different. Does everybody see that? Okay, and if you notice, you've got little drop-down um, arrows next to your uh, grades and letters and descriptions and all that, right? Everybody see? One of the nice things about this, this uh, setup is you can start playing around with the organization of this data. Like, for instance, if I go to the description tab and I say I want to sort A to Z, now it sorts all the data in that table 
based on the alphabetic uh, listing of those homework assignments. You know what I mean? I could also sort based on my grade. Let's go to grade and let's sort uh, largest to smallest. So I can put all my achievements up top and all my really bad assignments on the bottom, you know. So you can really get an idea, you can play around with the data, okay. Now, the reason why I wanted you to make a copy is because VLOOKUP will give you an, a little bit of an issue if this right here is not in order. If that first column is not in order, VLOOKUP can give you some problems. That's why I wanted you all to make a copy of it. But you can take this range of, uh, of data and sort it however you would like, and we'll play around with different ways of doing that uh, later. But <coughs> any other questions? Uh, any questions about this? All right, I do have one other thing I want to show you, and that's data validation. Um, all right, now let's go back up to our original table. One of the, I guess, crappy parts about this lookup tool over here on the right is if I want to change the lookup, I have to go in and actually type. Like I have to go in and say, instead of homework 12, I want homework 7. That's a pain if you've got to do this quite a bit. So, so I propose that there's a new way that we can reference those cells, and it's called data validation. Now, data validation, that's just a fancy way of saying that if I have a given cell, I only want it to be able to report certain values. Like, let's say I'm doing some calculations, and this cell right here, I want it to only have positive numbers. So I could put a, a, a limit on that cell, a restriction on that cell, and say, no, 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 no. It's got to be positive. So if I have a negative value, Excel warns me and it says there are some problems, right? And there's a number of different ways you can do data validation, and I want to play around with that um, uh, right now. So if you go to the Data tab, you'll notice, see where it says Data Validation right here? Does everybody see that on the Data tab? So Data, and I'm on Data Validation right there. If you click that, and notice how I'm hovering over cell I3. Um, it brings up the data validation box. And this is where I can start to restrict what's going on in that cell. In other words, let's say I only want it to be a whole number, or I only want it to be a list or a decimal value. What I'm going to do is this. I'm going to restrict the, uh, the, the contents of that cell to a given list. Okay. All right, now specifically, now watch what I'm going to do. The source for that list, see how my familiar button where I can select on the sheet? My source for that list is going to be these, right? You think about it, when I do look up, it's got to be based off of this, right? Make sense? So if I hit OK on this, so drop down and hit OK, look what happened. Does everybody see you got a little drop down arrow? Everybody see that? And now I can pick based off of the contents of that list. Pick that and then it changes everything. Not too bad, right? That's not too bad, is it? Nifty stuff, right? Doing that helps reduce the error. I mean, there were folks earlier that it wasn't working because the, the cells weren't capitalized and whatnot. Well, now Excel will only allow me to have values in here that match what's in that table. So watch this. If I take this homework right here, like let's say it's homework 6. Let's say I call this homework 6A and homework 6B and I go to the validation, it's now changed. I'm going to get you all laughing. It's going to happen. Well, good, good. I'm glad. Does anybody have any questions about this stuff? 
Excel will do a lot for you, okay? And with just a little bit of time, you would be surprised like how, how much you can customize a sheet to do what you want it to do. I mean, I hear students you know, in later classes say, I don't want to do it on Excel because um, I have to know how to do it on the exam. And, and I, I appreciate that, and I, and I understand that. But, what I, but the message I want to get across is Excel isn't some mystery program where you plug in the numbers and it just magically gives you the output. You're the one building the sheet. You're the one who's in control over what Excel does. So, I mean, please, by all means, use Excel when you can, you know? Any other questions? All right. Um, so here's what we're going to do uh, next time. Uh, let me, actually, let me pull up the syllabus. I don't even know that I fully remember. Okay, all right. So next time we're going to be looking at um, statistics, which there's a, there's a famous quote uh, from back in the 1800s said there's three kinds of uh, falsehoods. There's lies, there's damn lies, and there's statistics. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, statistics um, next time. But things like averages, standard deviations, taking a large data set and getting some fundamental information out of it. I mean, think you all turn in X number of homework assignments. They don't really matter. What matters is the average, right? So, you know, those, those statistics really matter. But also things like importing data, uh, um, you know, taking data from a third party or a different program. Can you take data from a different program and can Excel interpret it? The answer is yes. Um, and we're also going to be looking at other things like in class, some in-class exercises on some statistics, some more stuff on formatting, sorting data, different viewing options, looking at other charts, how to password protect a sheet so nobody can mess with your stuff. Um, auditing formulas and things like that, and that's what we got. Um, any questions? All right, so that's all I got for you all today. I don't have a homework assignment because I figured give you all a break. I'll give you all one on Thursday, and it'll be due the day before break. Sound good? All right, that's all I got. Um, let me stop this, and I will see you all uh, on Thursday.